the Royals are looking to win number 31 tonight. The last time and the only other time that they won 31 of their first 50 games was 1976. And tonight it's Alec Marsh who will be making his first career appearance against the Tigers. Yeah, looking forward to watching him pitch. Haven't seen him pitch in a little while. And I think his last start here at the K was in April. In comes a pitch and a swing and a miss. So a strikeout for Marsh. Got him with a hard curveball down and in. Breaking ball stayed up. Here comes Melendez who got a good jump and makes a sliding play. Nice play coming in. Can it hit it hard? Hit the top half of the ball. It had top spin on it. Little dunker out behind the second baseman. Out goes Massey to make the play. Marsh breezes through the top of the first. Casey Mize, who gave up two runs in his last appearance, that was on a home run from Brian De La Cruz. Two batters in. Yeah, that was it. After that home run, he was lights out. Left center field, and that will be down. Garcia, with his helmet flying off his head, is on his way to third, and he has a leadoff triple. You can't split the gap any per more perfectly. That was perfect. I mean, to tell you, and a nice opportunity right away to get the Royals on the board. Ground ball deflected by the pitcher. Run's going to score, and everybody's safe. Mize had a chance to really help himself. It was a one-hopper back to the mound, just deflected it behind the pitcher's mound. Garcia got a good read, and by the time the Tigers sorted things out why Witt was standing at first with an infield hit and an RBI one to nothing Royals not going and now a delayed steal Boy, the Royals were ready to play tonight 16th steal first time all year and matter of fact I don't think we've ever seen him do a delayed steal and now Vinny the wind will help it Carpenter makes the play on the track Bobby to third so Vinny ends up with a productive out Salvi leads everybody hitting with runners in scoring position in fact the Royals have three of the top four as a team they're hitting 301 that's the best in either league check swing line right field that's going to score with Salvador Perez with kind of a tentative half swing you don't think things aren't going well for the Royals then you haven't been paying attention so two to nothing Perez with Run batted in number 39. 22nd pitch for Mize and it's pulled on the ground to second. Bobbled by Keith and his throw pulled Tokerson off the bag. Hey look that doesn't help Mize's cause at all in this inning. But when you get when you get hit around like the Royals have been doing the you know, defense sometimes goes to sleep. That's a careless play there. And we'll see how many pitches that costs Casey Mize. He struck him out with a fastball. Casey Mize reaches back for 96, but two runs across for Kansas City early. So things continue to go well for the Royals, and up comes Bobby Witt Jr. Runners first and second, one out, and it's hit high in the air and deep into left center field. That is beyond the green. And into the water, the second deck. That's a hanging splitty that he catches perfectly. 468 footer of beauty into the upper tank hydration station here at the K. That's the longest home run of his career. Five nothing Royals in the second inning. So that was two bloops and a blast. Vinny straight away center field. Perez is back and it's off the wall. Pasquantino's at second base with a double. The crowd wasn't done cheering for Bobby Witt Jr. when Vinny put a charge into one to center. Salvi a bloop single RBI back in the first inning. And now Salvi lines it into left field. Vinny holds it third and the Royals have come out in the second inning and they have five hits from the first six hitters and eight hits in the first two innings. Massey deep enough to score a run. Carpenter goes back into the sunlight to make the catch. Here comes Vinny down from third, and the Royals lead 6-0 in the second. It's going to be the shortest outing we've seen from Casey Mize. He is coming out of the ball game. A.J. Hinch is making the change. Tyler Holton out of the bullpen. And there's one out in the bottom of the third. Brings up Michael Garcia, who's two for two through two innings. Garcia slices it to right center field toward the gap and it's down for a base hit gets by Carpenter all the way to the wall Renfro's already around second now Wilson waves him around third relay to the plate the throw is high and nearly goes over Kelly's head Garcia's in a third he's got his second triple of the game this time it drives in a run and the Royals are up seven nothing in the bottom of the third two triples in three innings for Michael Garcia and now he's in third base for Bobby with junior and that should be deep enough Carpenter gets behind it Garcia tags 
And the throw will be offline. And that's five RBIs for Bobby Wood Jr. And the Royals lead 8 nothing. The Tigers have something brewing here in the fourth inning. Got to figure out some way to get a point on the board. As that ball served to center field. Isbell breaks back on it, twists around, and corkscrews himself into the ground. Matt Veerling scores Canna and Perez. It is 8-2, and that was certainly unexpected. Isbell turned and ran, and when he turned back to try to pick up the ball, he kind of stumbled backwards. It went off his glove to the wall, and the Tigers are on the board. Now, Colt Keith right here with a chance to get something to the outfield, keep this going, get Matt Veerling in. Swinging a shot into center field, the base hit, fastball up. Colt Keith ripped it into center. Beerling trots home. Tigers have scored three here in the fourth inning. Just what you like to see. Strike back and start chipping away. Zach McKinstry with two down. McKinstry chops it to the right side. Pasquantino dives. It's past him. Massey backs it up. Makes a sliding stop. Throws to Marsh covering first in time. A terrific play from Michael Massey at second. And that ends the top of the fourth inning. Pasquantino couldn't get it, but Massey did. Alec Marsh is thankful. Tigers now have two on with two out and Spencer Torkelson is going to be the batter in a massive spot against one of his best friends in the world Alec Marsh fastball lays toward third Garcia makes a one hop stop on a slide gets to his feet throws to first for the out a dazzling play from Garcia at third base that finishes off the sixth inning for Alec Marsh six innings of three run ball his second quality start of the season. Bobby Witt Jr. leads off the bottom of the sixth inning. Royals lead the Tigers 8-3. to three. What is Bobby going to do next? Fastball hit high in the air. Deep to left center field. Way back and gone. Second home run of the game for Bobby Witt Jr. He's tied his career high with six RBIs. The Royals lead 9-3 to three in the bottom of the sixth. And after Bobby Witt Jr. hit a 468-foot homer in the second, now he hits one 425 feet to lead off the bottom of the sixth. Brings up Hunter Renfro, who's 0 for 2 with a walk. Renfro hits it high in the air, deep to left field. Green drifts back up against the fence, turns around, it's out of here. A solo home run for Hunter Renfro. And the Royals have double digits on the scoreboard. It's 10 to 3 in the bottom of the seventh. A double and a walk, and Anderson has hit a little speed bump here in inning number nine. The runners will move three and two, two out. Got him. 31 and 19, tying the best start in franchise history through 50 games. And the last one was a long time ago, but a memorable Royals team. 1976. It was the first time the Royals went to the playoffs. They started 31 and 19.